Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to cover in our series on business research management. Uh, dear friends, um, we have often heard about the research problems and the researchers have their set of uh, problems and to find solution to their problems, they choose the type of research design suited to their researchers. Dear friends, uh, today in this session, we are going to discuss on the type of uh, research design. In previous session, we discussed a little about quantitative research. Today, we would be covering in detail on quantitative research research as well as on qualitative research and for this very discussion we have once again with us in our studios Dr. Namita Rajput. Dr. Namita Rajput is a officiating uh, principal in Sri Aurobindo Evening College, University of Delhi. Dr. Rajput uh, is a prolific professor who believes in giving her maximum knowledge. Uh, dear friends, she has authored numerous books and number of the articles are to her credit. If you want to ask today questions from Dr. Namita Rajput on the types of research design, then you can call right in the studio. You can contact us through our toll-free number. Our number is one eight double zero double one zero. 430. I repeat our number is 18001010430. So dear friends, let's welcome our guest Dr. Namita Rajput and let's try to understand the types of research design. Hello ma'am, welcome to the lecture. Good morning friends. Today we have a very important topic called types of research designs. In the last lecture I talked about little bit of quantitative techniques uh, as far as the research design is concerned. Today we will be taking in detail both that is the quantitative as well as the qualitative research designs. Now as we said and we have already discussed research is a kind of, a, of an exercise which is very very organized in which we uh, make either a questionnaire which is a survey design and uh, could be the uh, already collected data could be a secondary data and then we apply certain econometric techniques suiting to our purpose and then of course we go in for the conclusions and the analysis of the results. So that means whatever we do we make the exercise more meaningful, the outcomes more meaningful and whatever research we do they have the research implications. Research without implications have got no meaning and benefit. So whatever we do we have to have a research question and of course that is we uh, try to relate it with the real life world, we try to give a proper meaning to it, we collect it through a proper uh, designated uh, you know the model and of course the outcomes which are a part and the parcel of the research exercise are used by the researcher and uh, it, the researchers could be uh, the academicians, they could be a policy makers because whatever is the outcome of the results of the research, they have a great meaning because it is the result and the outcome of a great amount of exercise which you have already done in advance and the outcomes they give a shape and the meaning to the work which you are doing. So under this backdrop let me start with the research and the research methods. The research methods are broadly into two types that is the quantitative and the qualitative methods which you choose will depend upon. So there are three important perspectives here which we have to look upon that is your research questions underlying philosophy of research and your preferences and skills. So if you see here uh, the major three perspectives to your research design, the first thing is that you have to find out what are your basic research questions. So you have to have a very clear cut perspective and the paradigms in mind uh, that is what are the proper research questions which you want to unveil. Secondly, what is the underlying philosophy of research? Do you want to innovate certain things or you want to you know have a new meaning to the already existing uh, uh, you know the knowledge uh, and of course, sometimes you want to create certain things which are absolutely new, which are exploratory in nature and sometimes you want to have a revision of the old concepts. So you have to have a very clear understanding of the philosophy underlying your research questions and followed by what are your preferences and skills. Certain people are good in uh, you know doing a quantitative research and certain people are good in doing a qualitative research but of course it is not about knowing because each researcher will when he starts with the research will try to have and grab the maximum knowledge 
knowledge as far as the application of these uh, quantitative and the qualitative methods is concerned. So that is not uh, at all the criteria. The criteria is whether we are doing a social research or we are doing a financial research or you know anything which can be quantified more easily. So if the research questions are uh, quantitative in nature, we would go in for a quantitative research design. And on the contrary, if you want to go in for a social research, the, the research would be a little bit uh, different in nature, which will have more of theoretical backdrop into it, trying to unveil uh, the existing piece of knowledge, uh, the existing research which has already been done in India and abroad. So the global perspective and the Indian perspective would be, uh, you know, uh, taken in detail. And of course, the analysis would be uh, the things which has not been done. So that is you find out a research gap and the, of course they are a part and parcel of doing a quantitative as well as the qualitative research. Because both the quantitative and the qualitative research they demand a great deal of the existing piece of knowledge so that you can create a value addition to your work and the things which are already been uh, done so you could also prove that uh, the whatever they have done is true but yes uh, you know to my uh, uh, you know knowledge of course when you add a little bit of a new paradigm or a new shape into their research design it creates a more value addition and of course your name will be there yes this this person has created this kind of a research design and uh, this is the outcome which nobody has explored earlier so taking it forward let me now talk about the basic principles of a research design now there are basically four features of a research design which has a deep uh, meaning into it. So we'll be doing it one by one and of course all these four parameters and the research design principles will be explained in detail. So starting with the first one that is the ontology. How you that is the researcher view the world and the assumptions that you make about the nature of the world and of the reality. Then is epistemology, the assumptions that you make about the best way of investigating the world and about a reality. The third is a methodology, that is the way you group together your research techniques to make a coherent picture. And the last is the methods and the techniques, what are actually do in order to collect your data and carry out your investigations. So these are the four basic uh, principles of the research design. These principles will inform which methods you choose. You need to understand how they fit into a bigger picture of the world and how you choose to investigate and how to ensure that your work will be coherent and effective. Now, as far as the underlying philosophy of these four basic principles is concerned, you have to be very particular in all the four parameters because these principles will give you a bigger picture that whether the research which you are carrying out, is it coherent and effective or not, whether the, uh, the methods which you choose are, uh, you know, suitable or not, and uh, how you're going to investigate, that is the techniques, that is the data and the methodology which you have chosen, are they going in a right perspective or not. So all these parameters uh, and the principles of the research research design are quite meaningful and will give a proper color to your research design that is whether the research design is appropriate as far as the research question is concerned or not. So let us do these uh, four uh, you know principles one by one in detail. So let me start with the first one. That is the four main schools of ontology. Ontology is basically whatever you do, you are trying to relate with the outside world, that is the real world. So how we are going to make it, let us do this in detail. The ontology, you know, works upon four parameters. That is the realism, internal realism, relatism and nominalism. So these are the four parameters on which you will judge uh, the ontology part of the, uh, the principle of a research design. The first is a summary part. The world is real and science proceeds by examining and observing it. That is if you are trying to find out something new, you have to be real about it. The reality is all about that is whether uh, you whatever you are proceeding with are they you know complying with the outside world or not and of course if you are doing it with science uh, then you can always prove it. The second is your internal realism that is the world is real but it is almost impossible to examine it directly. So you have to have an internal realism into your research. 
The third is a relativism. The scientific laws are basically created by the people to fit their view of reality. And the last is the nominalism. Reality is entirely created by the people and there is no external truth relating to it. So this was the summary part of ontology on the basis of four parameters that is the realism, internal realism, relativism and nominalism. The second is a truth factor. The truth factor is that there is a single truth. The truth exists but is obscure. There are many truths and there is no truth. The last is the fact. So these are the ontology parameters that is the summary truth and the facts. The facts talks about that it can be revealed through experiments. The facts are concrete but cannot always be revealed. The real relativism talks about the facts depending upon the viewpoint of the observer and the facts are all human creations. However, none of these positions are absolutes. They are on a continuum with the overlaps between them. But yes, whenever you judge uh, any of the construct, that is how we are you know, close to the real world, we judge them on these parameters. So let me have a recap of all the four. The first is the realism, the second is the internal realism, the fourth is a relativism and the last is the nominalism. And the ontology factor will talk about all the three parameters that is the summary, truth and the facts. So the second parameter as far as the, uh, the principle of the research design is concerned is the epistemology. Now it is the way in which you choose to investigate the world. So whatever is the method you choose to investigate the world is called as the epistemology. There are two main schools are first is positivism and the second is social constru constructionism. The first is the positivist belief that the best way to investigate the world is through objective methods such as observations. The positivism fits into a realistic ontology. The second is the social constructists believe that reality does not exist by itself. Instead, it is constructed and given a meaning by the people. Their focus is therefore on the feelings, beliefs and the thoughts and how people communicate these. The social constructism fits better with the, real, uh, with the relativist ontology. Now we have seen here the two main school of thoughts as far as the epistemology is concerned. Epistemology is all about how you choose to investigate the real world. The first is about the positivism. We, they talk about uh, the, the objective methods in which we choose to investigate the world. And the second is a social constructist. They believe that there is a, you have to construct the reality. It is not available by itself. So these are the two main school of thoughts as far as the epistemology is concerned. Now coming on to the third important principle of a research design which we are taking right now is a methodology. Now the earlier two methods which we have talked about is the ontology. The ontology has already talked about the, uh, the nature of the world as far as the reality uh, outside real world or a reality is concerned. Then we talked about the epistemology that is how best you are able to investigate your research with the outside world. So you can see in this slide the third is your methodology. The methodology is what? The way you group together your research techniques to make it more coherent picture. Now coming on to the methodology part, the epistemology and ontology will have the implications for your methodology. Realists tend to have a positive approach. They tend to gather the quantitative sources of the data. The relativist tend to have a social const constructionist approach. They tend to have gathered the qualitative sources of data. Remember, these are not absolutes. People tend to work on a continuum, role of fixed methods and approaches, and also consider the role of the researcher as well as the internal and external involved or detached is concerned. So, you know, these methodology part are very, very important. And the methodology which you adopt 
uh, as far as the research design is concerned, is a clear cut outcome of whatever uh, the epistemology and ontology factors you have already taken into account. Because you cannot adopt a research design in the air. So you have to see first the, the ontology factor. And uh, of course, that is how you're going to relate with the outside world and how you're going to investigate with the outside world. So the epistemology and the ontology are the two parameters on the basis of which you will decide the methodology which you have to adopt as far as the research design is concerned. So, you know, there we have already talked about that when you talk about the methodology, there are two uh, schools of thought, the positivism and the social constructism. The, the positivist, uh, they talk about uh, the best way to investigate the world is through the objective methods and uh, they fit within the realistic ontology, whereas the social constructors believe that the reality does not exist by itself, rather it is constructed and giving a proper meaning to uh, your research work. Now, uh, a very special note about the data, which I want to give uh, the highlights on that, that is the quantitative data is about quantities and therefore the numbers. The qualitative data is all about the nature of the things investigated and tends to be words rather than numbers. The difference between primary and the secondary data sources. And beware of the research data management practices and the archives of the data sets both in terms of downloading and uploading. So uh, the research scholar, they have to be very particular and pertinent about the data which they are working on. Because you have to work with the numbers, you have to work with the quantitatives, you have to work with the qualitatives. So in any case, uh, the qualitative data which you collect through the questionnaire will also be converted into a data. That is, uh, you have to convert it into some scores so that you can always apply certain econometric techniques. Otherwise, your, the data which you collect through the qualitative sources cannot be open to any kind of a quantification. So to make it possible, we convert the qualitative data into a certain parameter meters uh, with some certain scores so that they are at par with the numeric numbers which are there as far as the quantitative data is concerned. And of course, uh, you have to be very particular about the primary sources of data and the secondary sources of data. As far as the research is concerned, it is always important from the research point of view that when you are collecting the primary source of data or when you are collecting the data through structured questionnaires or one-to-one -one interview or through a phone or by the researcher himself, so the research, uh, you know, collection of the data which you do through the primary sources are tend to be more authentic, more data specific more research question specific and the outcomes which are the results of the primary sources of data are more meaningful because whatever you are doing the whole exercise is as per the perspective and the objective and the question of the researcher. But on the contrary if you are working on the secondary data the data which has been already been collected by the respondents uh, by the researcher they must be having some different uh, meaning to it or they must be having some different uh, uh, concept to it. The reference to perspective could be different, the reference to context could be different. So the results which is the results, uh, the results which are calculated on the basis of the secondary data could uh, be subject to certain kinds of doubt. But yes, if a care has to be taken, if the care is already taken to select the secondary sources of data and to see uh, on what parameters the data is collected and could be right also. So we cannot generalize this fact that always the secondary sources are bad and the primary sources are good. But yes, on the talk, when you talk on the relative terms, if you are working on an exploratory kind of a data or exploratory research design, the quantitative, uh, uh, this uh, the primary sources of data are better than the secondary sources of data. And of course, you have to be very, very particular about how the data set is managed. Uh, I mean, both in terms of downloading as far as uploading of the data. So you have to, you know, raise the veil. You have to be very particular because research uh, exercise is primarily very, very important. And the outcomes of which are supposed to be used by the policy makers, by the academicians, by the uh, various uh, other uh, research uh, seekers 
so a great care has to be taken on these parameters on the research design on the on the data management sets or in terms of the reality of the data etc so till now we have discussed uh, basically the four uh, basic principles of the research design so have a look on this ontology epistemology methodology and the data and the techniques and the methods etc the ontology will always talk about how you're close to the real world epistemology talks about the best way of investigating the world and the methodology is all about the research techniques to make it uh, more coherent and as far as the methods and techniques are concerned you have to take a great care to collect the data and definitely carrying out the investigations from the researcher point of view so taking it forward we have discussed uh, the four main schools of ontology the realism internal realism relativism and the nominalism on the basis of summary truth and the facts and the epistemology we talked about the two uh, school of thoughts the positivist thought and the social constructivist thought and as far as the methodology is concerned uh, uh, we talked about that these two things which we have talked about they work on a continuum and certain things are overlapping and uh, of course you have to be using your own uh, basic methods uh, and mixed approaches to calculate the results now we talked about a certain note on the data also the data is uh, you are you're playing with the numbers you are playing with the quantities and of course the qualitative data is about the nature and the things to be investigated the difference between primary and secondary data sources and you have to be very particular about the research data management practices and the archives of the data sets both in terms of downloading and in case of uploading now coming on to a very very interesting part of my lecture that is what how and on on the basis of what parameters you have to choose your approach so choosing your approach is the perspective in this slide your approach may be influenced by your colleagues views your organization approach your supervisor's belief and your own experience there is no right or wrong answer to choose your research methods whatever approach you choose for your research you need to consider five questions what is the unit of analysis for example are you doing a research on a country company or an individual so first question and most important question on the basis of which you will choose is what is the unit of analysis is it broad it is narrow or anything relating to the data company and individual are you relying on universal theory or a local theory because whatever research you start you must have a theoretical backdrop to it uh, whether that research uh, uh, you know the uh, knowledge is uh, global in nature or it is uh, national in nature or local in nature so you have to be very particular about uh, the universal theory which you are adopting now will the theory of data comes first should you read the literature first and then develop your theory or will you gather your data and develop your theory from that so again it is the choice of the researcher will your study be cross sectional or longitudinal are you looking at one point or changes over the time will you verify or falsify a theory you cannot conclusively prove the theory and the best is that you can do uh, is finding out nothing that disapproves it so it is therefore easier to formulate a theory that you can try to disprove because you only need a wrong answer to do that so these were the parameters on the basis of which you choose your approach first what is the unit of analysis two what is the theory all about that is what is the universal theory is it a local theory or not the third is whether you want to develop the theory or you want to or first come out with the data and then develop your theory and of course whether you would like to see at one point of time that is a cross sectional or a longitudinal or a changes over a period of time and last but not the least you want to verify a theory or you want to prove that this theory is wrong and my theory is right so these are uh, you know the judgmental factors uh, which the uh, which the researcher has to keep in mind before he starts with work <laughs> Thank you.
So we have already discussed now the qualitative technique. So in this part of my lecture, I would be talking on quantitative approaches to the research design. Now attempts to explain the phenomena by collecting and analyzing the numerical data. It tells if there is a difference but not necessarily why. The data collected are always numerical and analyzed using the statistical methods. The variables are controlled and as much as possible the research RCD as gold standard so we can eliminate the inferences and measure the effect of any change. The randomization to reduce the subjective biasness and if there is no number involved it is not quantitative. Some types of research lend themselves better to quant approaches than others. Now this is a very very important uh, technique as far as the quantitative approaches are concerned because the quantitative approaches are on the contrary of the qualitative research which we have already discussed. In that part we analyze the questions and uh, on the basis of the theory analyzed on the basis of the, uh, the, the questions which are there in the questionnaire. So here uh, as far as the quantitative data is concerned, the quantitative data has got a particular characteristics uh, which are not present in the qualitative approaches. Number one is that we always have uh, already collected the data on which we are working. Uh, we can always control certain variables, we can always uh, see the control of one keeping the others as constant or cetera paribus. And of course, you can uh, you know do uh, some kind of randomization with the variables collected to make it more authentic and to make it more good. And followed by it that uh, uh, you know there are certain better ways that you are always uh, uh, able to collect good results on the basis of the quantitative approaches and there are certain uh, business problems which can only be solved by the quantitative approaches compared to other social problems which are better solved by the qualitative approaches. So here we are always uh, into a phenomena of collecting and analyzing the numerical data and of course uh, it tells you a difference why but not necessarily it gives you a difference that yes this data set is different from the other. But why it is different from one another is not the uh, under the domain of the quantitative it is under the domain of the qualitative aspects. So what I feel is uh, that when you start with the research problems you should uh, have a kind of a combination of the quantitative and the qualitative data because uh, the results which are uh, under the consideration of both designs that is the quantitative as well as the qualitative it is going to give you a more meaningful output, outcome and which can only be used by uh, number of people in their own ways. So here uh, when you talk about the quantitative approaches it is more sensitive, it is more numerical, it is more database and you are always uh, you know eliminate any kind of inferences and the data uh, the collected uh, the answers collected through this kind of a approach of or a research design that is a quantitative approach research design are more authentic because you can always uh, you know put the data into a software and software uh, or if you want to control certain variables you can give the option and uh, instruction to that software that we want to only see the the results of these two factors keeping others as constant. So there are so many variants which are available as far as the research design is concerned in that software. So uh, both quantitative as well as qualitative they complement each other because uh, the, the domain are very narrow in terms of qualitative and the domains are again narrow in terms of the quantitative. So if you want to increase your domain frontiers and paradigms and make it more meaningful and conclusive uh, so you can have a combination of the two approaches that is the quantitative as well as the qualitative data. Now coming on to a quantitative data. So let me do this kind of a research design in detail. So we start with the quantitative data. The data sources include the survey where there are large number of respondents especially where you have used a Likert scale that is from 0 to 5 starting from strongly agree, disagree to strongly agree. The moment you increase your scale 0 to 5, the numbers which you give to that uh, data set gives on increasing. For example, if you strongly disagree, it could be minus 1 and if you strongly agree, it, it will be 5. So the Likert scale moves on from this from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Now coming on to the observations that is the counts of the number and the coding of the data into the numbers is concerned. So the data sources uh, as we have discussed it could be a survey if the data set is large. 
So, there is you can ask the respondents to put it on a Likert scale that is from 0 to 5 and you can always assign a number depending upon the options you have taken. The observations that is the counts of the number or the coding data into a number. Then is your secondary data that is the, the data set which is available on the government uh, data and the SAT scores etc. The analysis techniques includes the hypothesis testing, the correlation and the cluster analysis. Now as far as the analysis uh, part is concerned, uh, the analysis is the most difficult part of the research because your whole everything depends upon the analysis. More accurate analysis you do, the better research would be. So you can start with the, like if I'm trying to uh, create, I mean test the relationship of a demand and price. So my hypothesis is that, that there is an inverse relationship of price and demand. So this is my hypothesis and I start testing my hypothesis according to the data set which I've collected. So if the hypothesis uh, testing is done, we see the p-value. If the probability value is more than 0.05 or greater than 0.05, my null hypothesis is accepted and we say that there is no significant relationship of demand and price. And uh, probably we last time also we discussed that there are two type of hypothesis, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis always negates the relationship and the alternative hypothesis is on the contrary of the null hypothesis. So we use uh, various types of techniques for the data analysis and to find out the conclusion, summary and results. It could be hypothesis testing as I said through null and alternative. It could be correlation that what is the correlation between the two variables. It could be regression. It could be so many other new techniques which are available on the new uh, hypothesis uh, collecting data websites and there are so many softwares which are available to test this and then we can also have a cluster analysis. So all these techniques are used. Uh, to find out a good research analysis. Now coming on to a black swan and falsifiability. The falsifiability or refutability of a statement, the hypothesis or a theory is the inherent probability, possibility that it can, can be uh, proven false. The Karl Popper and the black swan deductive that is the inductive reasoning. The hypothesis testing start with a null hypothesis that is the H0 that there will be no difference between the two. So we talk about here about the black swan and falsifiability. Falsifiability is about the refutability to find out that there is no difference between the two. So we start with this, this Karl Popper and the black swan, they gave, they gave the deductive that is the inductive reasoning. The hypothesis is testing starts with a null hypothesis that is H0 and there is no difference between the two. Now coming on uh, to a very interesting part that is the type 1 and the type 2 errors which is depending upon the hypothesis which we have taken once again. Never confuse type 1 and type 2 errors again. Just remember that the boy who cried wolf caused both type 1 and type 2 errors in that order. First everyone believed that there was a wolf when there wasn't. Next they believe that there was no wolf but there was a wolf. So substitute effect for wolf and you are done. So there are so many confusions and the errors when you talk about the research which can be categorized into two types of errors that is the type 1 and the type 2 errors. The type 1 error is that when the things are not existing and you uh, feel that they are existing and everyone believes that they are there. Second is that when nobody believes that it is there but it is actually there. So this, this is the simple definition of type 1 and type 2 errors we will be doing in detail in the coming uh, part. Now coming on to the analysis or analyzing the quant data that is the quantitative data. Always good to group and to visualize the data initially the outliers or data cleaning, what average are you looking for, the mean, the median or the mode, the spread of the data that is the skewness, oblique the distribution, the range, variance and the standard deviation. Now these are very very interesting part and very very important part of the research that is once you have the data collected in front of you, you do a proper grouping of the data, you visualize the data initially, 
and you can always uh, you know observe in the data that there are certain extreme figures which are available. Like if you normally see the distribution of the data, it could be 20, 200 and sometimes if you see a figure of 2000, 10,000, 5000, so immediately you can find out that these are the extreme datas. So these extreme data can negatively influence your data set. So the first and the foremost thing which is required from a researcher is to completely outroot that outlier. There are so many methods which are available to work upon it, to make the data clean, to completely uproot the outliers. What is the end result of uprooting the outliers and cleaning the data is that now you can always apply a technique which can smoothen the data, which can give a more meaningful result. Because if the data is having the extreme numbers, which are also called as the outliers, they are going to affect the reality of the result because there could be only one or two such figures, but they are going to influence on the representative figure of the data which is collected. So it is always advisable to completely take care of such kind of data to uproot that data, to give a more meaningful results to your research design. Then of course you have to find out that which is the most uh, important average you are looking for. It could be mean which divides the data into equal parts and if it is a mode that means you are trying to find out the highest uh, frequent data in your data set. It could be an average that is a mean which is the representative figure that is the average number you are trying to find out so that you have the best representative figure of the data. Now, uh, sometimes uh, the data is skewed, that is uh, all the numbers are either positive or all the numbers are either negative. So more of the data if it is positively skewed and if you have more of negative data, it is negatively skewed. So the normal data will always have a bell type of a curve. So you have to first find out uh, basic characteristics of the data. And uh, you know, mind there is a note which I would like to address to all the researchers that whatever research question you take, whatever research design you choose, whether the quantitative or the qualitative, it is very, very important to first understand the nature of the statistics collected, the nature of the data which is collected by a researcher. That what is the basic characteristics of the data which is in front of you. So more observant you are relating to the data characteristics, the right technique will you adopt to find out the correct analysis of the data. Now what are you looking for? You are trying to find a signal from the noise, generally either a difference that is between or within a group or a correlation. Choosing the right test to use whether you want to uh, go in for a parametric test or a non-parametric test depending upon the sort of data you have. Internal oblique ratio versus nominal oblique ordinal and how it is distributed. The correlation does not employ any kind of a causation. So you have to be very particular about the data which you have to collect that is the signal of, from the noise. Uh, whether you want to try to find out the difference between the two within the group or outside the group, whether you want to take in the parametric test in which uh, you take certain assumptions of the population or the non-parametric test. And of course, if you are trying to find out the correlation and uh, uh, or the causation or uh, it does not simply mean that if the two variables are correlated, so they are also having a causation. So causation test is different and correlation test is different. Now we will be giving a few examples of the correlation. The per capita cheese consumption that is correlates with the number of people who died by becoming a tangled in their bed sheets and the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool that is the films Nicole's Cage Apreed. So from a spurious correlation website. So if I ask this that this child is growing and that tree is growing, so there is a spurious correlation because the, the growth of the tree depends upon the other factors and the growth of the child depends upon the other factors. So these are the examples which are in front of you on the screen as far as the spurious correlation is concerned. Now coming on to a very important perspective that is the interpreting the test statistics. You have to have four basic things in front of you. First the significance level, 2 the p-value, 3 the power and the last is your effective size. So we will first talk about the significance level. 
a fixed probability of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis if it is a fact true. So, usually we set at 5 percent level. The p value is the probability of getting the value of the test statistics as extreme as more extreme than observed by a chance alone. So, if the null hypothesis H0 is true. Next is your power that is the ability to detect a difference if there is only one, the effect size, the numerical value of expressing the strength or the magnitude of a reported relationship be it a causal or not. So, now we have the example of quant data or the analysis. The matched users were those who learning styles were matched with the lesson plan that is the sequential users with a sequential lesson plan. Mismatched participants used a lesson plan that was not matched to their learning styles that is the sequential users with a global lesson plan H0, H1, H2. H0 is there will be no significantly significant difference in knowledge gained by the users from different experimental groups. So, as you can see here you are trying to find out negative relationship and you are trying to negate that there is no significant relationship. So, when the world is viewed that there is no significant statistical difference between the two we are negating the relationship and we call it as a null hypothesis. So, in the next is we, we have H1 and H2. The students who learn in matched environment will learn significantly better than those who are learned in a mismatched environment. So, here you are trying to find out the alternative hypothesis yet yes there is a significant positive relationship between uh, the people who are learning in a matched environment or an unmatched environment. And the students who learn in a mismatched environment will learn significantly worse than those who learn in a matched environment is the alternative to null hypothesis then alternative hypothesis 1 and alternative hypothesis 2. So, these are the examples of a quantitative analysis which is available on a software and in which you are trying to analyze the, the quant or the quantitative numbers. Now, coming on to the interpretation part, the interpreting a test statistics. If you can see the table on the slide, the group type is matched and the group type is mismatched. Then you have a number that is the matched is 39 and mismatched is 43. Then we have the average knowledge gained that is 1.23 in case of matched and 1.98 in, in terms of the mismatch. The standard deviation is talk about 3.29 in matched and 3.65 in mismatched. The statistics, uh, the test statistics, uh, the results which are in front of you are from the software called SPSS that is the statistical package for social sciences to gain if there was any significant difference in knowledge gained. Initial conjecture suggests that the mismatched group actually perform better than the matched group. However, the difference between the two groups was not significant because the f that is 1 comma 80 is equal to 0 0.9 and the p value is 0 0.34. The perishial ETA squared is 0 0.012 and hence the hypothesis 1 and 2 can be rejected because the p value is less than 0 0.05. So, researcher must remember that if you want to find out the hypothesis testing you must give proper significance and only significance to the p value. Here in the result you have seen that the p value is less than 0 0.05 which states that the hypothesis has to be rejected. In case the hypothesis has to be accepted the p value has to be greater than 0 0.05. Now coming on to what quant researchers should worry upon because this is an entirely different set of data which you are playing with you are playing with numbers, you are playing with quants, you are playing with the exact financial data in front of you. So, what quant researchers should worry upon? The first is, is my sample size big enough? You know these kind of uh, uh, you know points are very very important because we are we have just started with our research methodology series for the business research. If these things are not clear, 
you cannot start with your research in a significant way. So these parameters have to be kept in mind by all researcher that whatever research you do as far as the quantitative research is concerned, the main thing which you have to uh, you know worry upon these factors are in front of you. The first we are talking here is that whether the sample size is big enough or not because for a sample to be a representative of the population, the, the amount of the people into that sample has to be right. So you have to worry upon whether the sample size is big enough or not because if the sample size is small, you cannot generalize the results. The second is, have I used the correct statistical test, whether a parametric test, unparametric test, non-parametric test, etc. You have to worry on that. Third, have I reduced the likelihood of making a type 1 and a type 2 error which we have already suggested? Are my results generalizable? Are my results methods, results reproducible? Am I measuring the things in a right way? Now see when you talk about the quantitative research, the researchers have to be very very cautious on these parameters which we have discussed now. There is a proper test which is available to find out the sample adequacy of the data. There are certain thresholds when the results are projected on the screen of the statistical package called SPSS. You have to be very cautious about the threshold limits. You have to compare your results with the threshold limits and then you can conclude that yes, your data set, uh, whatever you have taken or the sample size is right or wrong. Followed by whether the test which you have taken is right or wrong is also very, very important from the researcher's point of view, followed by, uh, you know, the hypothesis which you have framed are right or wrong. And of course, you have to be very cautious about the other parameters in a right way. What wrongs with the research, quant research? First is, some things cannot be measured or measured accurately. It does not tell you why. Can be impersonal, no engagement with a human behavior or individual. The data can be stated snapshots of the point in time. It can take in version of a truth or a lie. The lie damns lie and statistics persuade power of the numbers. Now coming on to the qualitative approaches, any research that does not involve numerical data, instead it uses the word pictures, photos, videos, audio recording, fields, notes, generalities, people, own words. It tends to start with a broad question rather than a specific hypothesis. They develop a theory rather than start with the inductive rather than the deductive approaches. Then about gathering the qualitative data. The data to yield a rich data to explore how and why things happen. Don't need a large sample sizes is in comparison to quantitative research. Some issues may be arise such as respondent providing inaccurate or false information or saying that they think the researchers wants to hear. The ethical issues may be more problematic as the researcher is usually closer to the participants. The researcher's objectivity may be more difficult to achieve. So we have compared both uh, the problems with the qualitative data and the problems with the quantitative data. As far as the problems with the quantitative data is concerned, you can manage through the software. But as far as the gathering of the qualitative data is concerned, here you have to be very specific about certain issues in terms because sometimes if a question is asked from the respondent, so they try and answer the uh, answer in the way which the respondents wants to hear rather than the truth. So what is the impact of that? The impact is that the results which are acquired and calculated on the basis of such responses which are not true will make the research more insignificant. So you know, there are certain ethical issues which are also arising on this. There are certain issues uh, arising on the wrong information inputted by the respondents and probably uh, you are more subjective here rather than objective as far as the qualitative data is concerned. Now coming on to the sources of the qualitative data, the first is your interview, the structured, semi-structured or unstructured followed by a focus group 
which is a part and parcel of the qualitative research. Then the questionnaires or the surveys which you have framed, keeping into consideration the opinion and the variance of the various uh, target groups, uh, the affected groups uh, as far as the research is concerned. Then you could always collect uh, through the secondary sources like the self diaries, self reporting, written records and the direct observations which may be recorded on a video and on audio basis and the ethnography. So these are the, the, the sources of the qualitative data. Now analyzing the qualitative data is another issue that is the content analysis, the grounded analysis, the social network analysis, the discourse analysis, the narrative analysis and the conversation analysis. Now coming on to the examples of the qualitative data research. Describing and comparing the two types of audio guides, person led and technology led. The geolotted audio and enable public informal uh, learning of the historical events and the data sources on the basis of the questionnaires, research or observations and the small focus groups is concerned. Now the next part is your data analysis and the findings. The comparison of two different works, differences, similarities of the works, issues surrounding the participant engagement, thematic analysis, the mode of delivery, the number of participants, the social interactions, geographical affordance and the places and locations, the user experience, opportunity for learning and other factors. So the finding lessons learned and recommendations are most important in this case. Now what qualitative research should worry about? Have I coded my data correctly? Because you are changing the data into a quantifiable mode. So probably you have to code the data correctly. So this is a more major factor of concern that if you are dealing with the qualitative data, you have to see whether the coding is done correctly or not, followed by have I managed to capture the situation in a realistic manner. So the ontology aspect has to be covered, that is how close you are to the real world. So this is a great matter of concern because if you are not uh, embedding yourself with the outside world, the results outcome would be more unrealistic in this regard. Then have I described the content in a sufficient detail or not? Because probably sometimes the detailing is not there, which is going to impact the output of the, uh, the outcome of the result uh, of the research. So again, to have a greater concern as far as the outcomes is concerned, a proper detailing has to be done followed by have I managed to see the world through an eyes of my participants because the empathetic part has to be very correctly uh, you know addressed. Uh, you have to keep yourself uh, in the shoes of the researchers and then frame the questionnaire and then frame the questions. In my approach the flexibility and able to change is also one of the major factors which has to be kept into uh, you know the major domain. What wrongs are about the qualitative data? It can be very subjective, it can always be, it can't be always be repeated, it can always be, can't always be generalizable, it can't always give you a definite answers in the way the quantitative research can. It can easily carry out the bad or a poor quality, the qualitative research than a bad quantitative research. So these are the wrongs of the qualitative research which have to be addressed in a very diligent and a significant manner. Then followed by the validity, reliability, trustworthiness, confirmability, credibility and the transferability is concerned. So coming on to the last part of my lecture that is the summary. The type of approaches you choose will be determined by your research questions, your epistemology and ontomology stances and your skills and abilities to utilize a certain approach. For more people in ed tech a mixed methods approach will be used. So long as you make an informed choice and can justify it, it can be fine. Just be aware about the limitations of your approaches and try to compensate whether it is necessary or not. So these were the points which are majorly a part of quantitative and the qualitative. I have given you the plus and the minus of both the approaches. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much. And dear friends, we would love to have your queries, your feedbacks as well as uh, your suggestions. So if you have any, do write to us at info.cec at nic.in. The lecture is going to be uploaded on YouTube soon. Keep watching us, keep writing us. We will be meeting again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much.